What's up guys and welcome to my channel Flame Number 4. In this video we're just going to show you how we made the extension for the stage into Pirate's Cove. So what we did was we took the same wood as we had before which was just that thin wood from them crates that we got from Donnell Mill. I have been in there recently and if you do have a local Donnell Mill next to you and you want to use it to make the stage they do have them in there still so you can go and use those because I got another one to cut up to make this. So what I did is I just took two sections of the crate and I cut them out. Let me just open this up so you can see good old Roxy in there. So yeah, I took the wood and I just cut two sections. The bottom piece is the same as what we did with the flooring on the other one. So it's just a thin wood which comes with it which slots into the grooves in the sides. And that was just cut into an arch. So we pieced the two pieces together and then we put the arch piece in. And then what I did, I've got a full video on how I did all this. Uh, at the end of this video, this is just me just explaining how I did it. And then if you want to see it in detail, I do have snippets of how I did it. And then you could go ahead and do one for yourself. So I got some, just some fake sort of, you can get it off eBay. It's like fake flooring that you can buy. And you kind of just put like the wallpaper paste kind of put stuff on there or the border stuff and you stick it on top, let it dry and then you can just cut around it. I went over it with the brush with a black uh, paint and then just sort of made it and weathered it so that it looked really old. And then we went around the edges with some felt tape just to finish it off. This is just like a little rod. It's like a metal rod that you can buy from any hardware store. I think I got it from... A home base is what our place is called and then I just sort of bent it into place and then cut it and then I drilled two holes in here, pushed one in there, pushed one into there, glue gunned it through through either side and then just put some felt tape over it. Before I did that I put I cut the curtains again. I got this fabric from eBay. I do have some spare so if you want some you can have it. It's just like star purple curtains. It's really cool. It's just really thin material. It's like a couple of quid so it was really cheap and then I, I sort of did the stitching like I did on the other curtains but I kind of cut little grooves into each one so that you can see it's a different curtain to the stage one just so it makes it a bit better. Let me just open these up. We will be finding a way to um, attach them via magnets to the stage so when we attach them all we'll be able to attach them via magnets which would be really cool. As you can see here at the back, I will do some detailed pictures of this, I'll just take uh, Foxy out just for the minute is a little ship's wheel there so that little ship's wheel as you can see in the background there that was just ordered off eBay it was just if you just type in ships pirates wheel or ships um, steering wheel and stuff like that it comes up with a lo load and this was a metal one which I painted up uh, brown so it looks like an old one and then that's all done like that and then just attach it to the wall via a screw which does spin around but it's only really kind of there for decoration like so that's it really guys other than sort of strengthening the bottom up I put another piece of wood the same thickness as this in there just to kind of strengthen the bottom and then I'm going to be painting it all black this isn't finished finished but and then this will be painted black and that will be painted black and then that will be done but if you want to see some detailed pictures, stay tuned on uh, the channel because I will be doing extensions and zoomed in pictures on my social media and stuff like that. So if you want to see how it's going and you want to catch a progress update, follow me on Instagram or something because I always put pictures up on there of how it's getting on if you want to have a sneak peek at what's coming. So that's how you build Pirate's Cove. Thanks for watching. Remember the next bit is going to be me building it. So if you want to know how to build one for yourself, stay tuned. Okay guys, now let's get on to how we built this Pirate's Cove. So the first thing you need to do is go grab yourself one of those crates. You remember the crate from the uh, long video with um, how to build the stage? Well, you want to go get yourself another one of those. You can get the wood yourself if you need to. Uh, it's just like some thin, uh, lightweight wood. But with me, I went and got one of those uh, crates again. They're only like $4.99. They're not very expensive. And I took it apart. So what I needed was just the tools that you can see here to rip it all apart. Uh, the screwdriver came in handy, this flathead one, just to get in the grooves. I used a scraper to take any of the excess glue away and I used these, um, these kind of like pinch of pliers just to get those nails out. And the Stanley blade was just to kind of like scrape away a bit of the glue at the start. Right, so the first thing we need to do guys is take the back piece of the crate you want to measure it out so that it is halved. So you want to just sort of work out how 
where halfway is on the mark and then you want to get a black marker and then just score down the middle and then all you need to do after that is go ahead and cut it out so remember when, sh when, when you are cutting it out do it somewhere safe do it out the way so that you know you've got some space to do it you will need some sandpaper I used the 180 grit sandpaper and 80 grit sandpaper just to take off that edge so there wasn't any splinters then you just need to stand it up really, kind of get an idea of how it's going to look. What I did here was I just kind of put it together. It's, there's nothing holding it together here. It's just standing free, standing on its own. But it kind of gives me an idea. Right, as you know, with the bottom, it slides into that groove. So just mark where it goes in. So push it into the groove, into the corners. And as you can see, it's kind of like making the crate up but not to the scale that it is. So you just want to mark the ends because that's very important. And then you will have sort of like your base frame. This is where I just took kind of like a wheel, a wheel hub uh, from a vehicle just to get that curvature. You can do it square if you want to. I decided to be a bit creative and do it as a curve because I think it looks a lot better than it does. You can use a bowl or anything round that you can find around the house, which will help you. Once you've done that, you just need to get yourself a jigsaw and cut around the edges. I don't know if you can achieve this with a saw. You might be able to. Um, you could try, but I used a jigsaw and some 80 grit sandpaper just to take off that edge again. So that obviously there's no splinters and it's all dust free. Remember to dust it off before you apply anything like the flooring because you don't want to have any dust on there getting in the way. What you need to do now, guys, is just weigh up sort of like where the flooring's going to go. This flooring is obtained from eBay. It's a sheet. It's kind of like a printed sheet, but it's very good. It's applied by border glue, and it's really easy to do. So once you've cut out the section just by um, doing a template, you kind of want to weigh it up and just see how it fits and how it feels on there. You want to leave a little gap at the front because you don't want it to overflap too much because it will peel. Then you need to go ahead and get some wallpaper. Um, this is like Doll's House wallpaper wall. So it's kind of like a fake brickwork effect. And then you kind of just cut it out to match the sides. You don't want to be gluing anything until everything's cut ready to go because you want to do it all at the same time. So here you go. So it's just this is just a home base ready mix border glue. It's very good. It holds it on very well. It hasn't tried to peel or anything. Then you want to just take yourself, just get an, a brush. You can get an old brush if you need to. Make sure there's no brush um, sort of like ends falling off into the parts itself because if you do then you'll have one underneath and it will show so you want to kind of just spread that evenly and then just push them down. Use a sponge to uh, push it out as we did in the other video just so that it's all down and uh, you know all glued and then I just applied a little bit of glue over the top of it as well so once the glue is applied over the top I mix some black paint up onto a brush and I kind of like lightly very lightly you don't want to push hard at all uh, just went over the wood just to kind of make it look old because I don't think it looks too new and obviously the Pirates Cove looks like it's all run down and it is out of order after all so uh, to me it made sense to make it look old so all you need to do is just get get the least amount on the brush as possible as you're doing this and just sort of brush it over the top of it this is still drying so it, the glue is still a bit wet and I found that this was better to apply it you don't want to do it when it's too dry because it will stick and then it will st the paint will dry with the glue which is obviously better and it gives you a better effect you can add as much or as little as you want but here I just think it it looks like it's been stood on and it looks like it's old. We had the picture there for reference. I was going to make a bracket to hold it together, decided against it. But here is how I made the sign where it says, um, sorry, out of order. So I just took one of those label stickers, put it onto a piece of wood that came with the crate and then cut around it. As you can see, it's the same size as that. Gave it a sand. Wasn't too bothered about it being a bit scraggy at the ends because obviously, like I say, FNAF stuff and Pirate's Cove is used. It's not a brand new thing. It's obviously out of order for a reason and that's because it's... There you go. So that's going to be the out of order sign there. So I think it looks pretty good. So the next thing you want to do is just key it up with a little bit of sandpaper, maybe like a 180 grit sandpaper. And I just got some spare alloy wheel paint. You can use any silver paint. You can even paint brush it on if you want to. And just go over the label. 
as you can see I got a ship's wheel I got that off eBay it was like three pounds and it's made of metal and I also got the sign here I just took a little bit of the stick that I had left over from the other um, build and just glued it to the back where it says sorry out of order what I did is I just printed off a sticker or just like a, a piece um, a piece from using Word and printed that off onto the printer and then stuck it onto the label, went with a little bit of laminating paper over the top and then I just sort of like painted over it and then scratched away um, the paint, the excess paint. So as you can see here, the sign looks pretty good. It's going through to the bottom and I just used the uh, glue gun to glue it on. I drilled two extra holes ready for the curtain pole to go into the top. And then I took the ship's wheel and I just went over it with a grey scotch. Or you can also go over it with a little bit of sandpaper just to give it a key because obviously we don't want it silver. But it was cheaper to buy it in that colour all metal cast so just prime it up like you can see here just use any sort of um, you can use etch primer, grey primer, any sort of plastic primer and then just paint it with a nice sort of like brown I gave this like one dust coat and then like a major coat uh, I think that's just plenty enough it doesn't need to be perfect because we are going to make it look old in a moment so here we go Right, so once you've finished doing it and it's all dried off, just take some of that black paint that we used again. And remember, you can get these sample pots of black paint from any sh any shop, they're like 99p, and just go over it to make it look old. So here we are, this is kind of like the finished article where we have, um, well, I would say it's finished, but where we're going to get ready. We painted the black edges just because I know they're going to be covered in felt tape, but it's good to have it neat. So this is just another angle of um, the stage. This is a metal rod that we got from home base. It was only $2.99. It's very good. It's quite thin. You have to make sure you drill the holes well enough. Once you cut it off with a hacksaw, you just kind of, you can bend it round with your hand. It's really easy to bend. It doesn't take a lot to bend the, um, the metal at all. You just need to fix it into place. What you can do though, guys, with this, with this type of thing, is just put it in place and if you're not happy with it just keep bending it with your hands so that it it fits really well and it looks like it's supposed to be there right so with this cloth i got this off ebay i just typed in star a purple star fabric and it came up with this if you do want some for your stage please do contact me all you need to do is drape it over to kind of get an idea of how it's going to be remember that's going to be wrapped around that pole so you want to leave enough here so that you can put it over and sew it together once you've done that guys what you need to do is you need to cut the fabric so that it covers the whole thing and then once you're happy with the sizing and you know once it's folded over as you can see here you just want to halve it like so there we go and then once you're happy with it being in half, because obviously we need to split the curtains to reveal uh, Foxy, you just need to take a Stanley blade. You can use scissors, but be very careful when doing this. And then just cut down the edge. Start at the bottom and always cut away from yourself. You don't want to cut towards yourself because you will cut yourself uh, badly with a sharp blade. So make sure you do that. Remember, my fingers are quite close to this, but I have done it quite a few times and I learn by my mistakes, but I have moved them out of the way there. And just work your way to the top until you have all, until you basically have it in half and you have two sections. So here we go, let's have a look. There you go. What you want to do, if you've got any excess thread, just pull it off. If it looks weathered and it looks like the thread is peeling, that's good. It just adds to the effect. You're not cutting this and making it look neat because you want it to look old. Once you've got it in place, what you need to do is just fold it over. Get a rough idea how sort of tall you want these to look so how much you want them to drape down what they're going to look like when they're folded up i was going to just put them over standard as was as we did on the um the finesse stage but i found out that it's going to be better if we cut grooves into it because they'll be able to fold back easier so they wouldn't fold very well like this as you can see but in a moment when we cut grooves into it it will fold back a lot easier so what you need to do is you need to just sew a, a stitch line, a very simple stitch line, all the way down in half. 
making sure that the pole obviously fits. If you are unconfident with the excess stuff, you can fold it around the excess pole that you had, the last bit that you had left over, if you're not too sure. And then what you need to do is you just need to score. Make sure you do this with an adult if you're going to attempt it yourself, uh, if you're not too keen on doing it. And then you need to cut out like little square sections. So as you can see here, we're just going to cut little slits into it all the way down like so and then once you've done that you need to cut in between the lines make sure you only cut one every other one because you don't want to um, just have a big gap you want it to be like that so that will allow you to fold the curtain in place as you can see here we've already put the first curtain in and we're about to apply the second just take it out remember don't glue this pole in yet because you will need to put these curtains on and it's very important that you you don't do anything like gluing anything structural into place get the curtains how you want them line them up get them nice and neat as you can see there's a few straggly bits but i just think it adds to the effect as because we've done those little grooves the curtains now draw so that makes it obviously enough just to reveal um foxy in pirate's cove Right, so now I've gone round the edges with the felt tape. You know how easy it is to do that, guys. All you need to do is cut some sections and just put the felt tape over the top. We haven't painted the back bit black and we haven't figured out how we're going to add it to the stage yet. But I'm sure you guys will have some nice suggestions on what we can do and get it done so that it looks nice. But I think Pirate's Cove has come along really well. Uh, up next is going to be a few pictures of what it looks like with Foxy in. And please tell me what you think. Remember guys, subscribe and like and give us your uh, information on what you would like to see next. This has been Pirate's Cove. You've been watching Flame War 4. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks again. Bye bye.